The Battle of Kumanovo, on 23-24 of October 1912, was a major battle of the First Balkan War. It was an important Serbian victory over the Ottoman army in the Kosovo Vilayet, shortly after the outbreak of the war. After this defeat, the Ottoman army abandoned the major part of the region, suffering heavy losses in manpower and in war materiel. Chapter 1 – Background The objective of the Royal Serbian Army Plan was to destroy the Ottoman army in a decisive battle before the Ottomans could complete the mobilization and concentration of forces. The Serbian planners assumed that the main Ottoman force would be deployed defensively in the Valley of Varda and on the strategically important plateau of Ovspol. The Serbian commander-in-chief was General Radomir Putnik. The aim was to double envelop the Ottoman army by using three armies. First Army, under Crown Prince Alexander, composed of five infantry and one cavalry division, was deployed in the area around Vranje, with the task to attack the enemy frontly. Second Army, under Stepa Stepanovic, composed of one Serbian and one Bulgarian division, deployed in the area around Kustendil, was assigned to the easternmost attack, with the objective of attacking the right flank of the enemy. Third Army, under Bojida Jankovic, composed of four infantry divisions and one infantry brigade, deployed in two groups, the first one at Toplica and the second one at Medveda, was assigned to the westernmost attack, with the task to take Kosovo and then move south to attack the left flank of the enemy. Smaller units were sent to take Sanzakt, but according to the initial Ottoman plan, created by Kolmar Freyha von der Goltz, the Ottoman forces in Macedonia would stay in defence and, if necessary, retreat to Albania. The decisive battle would take place in Thrace, versus the Bulgarian army. However, Nazim Pasha, the newly appointed commander-in-chief of the Ottoman army, decided to surprise the Serbs by taking an offensive in Macedonia. The plan also included the offensive in Thrace. His goal was to win the initial battles against the surprised allies, hoping that the great powers would then intervene and stop the war. The Ottoman mobilization in Macedonia was slow, and the Ottoman Varda army, led by Zeki Pasha, had little more than a half of its manpower mobilized when the war started. The army was composed of V Corps, under said Pasha, composed of four divisions deployed in the area around Stip. Vi Corps, under Kavit Pasha, composed of two divisions, deployed in the area around Veles. Seven Corps, under Feti Pasha, composed of three divisions, deployed in the area around Kumanovo. Smaller units in Kosovo. Chapter 2, Prelude. Even before the war was declared, border skirmishes occurred. On 15 October, the front of the Toplica group of the Third Army, Serbian Chetniks, acting on their own, attacked the Ottoman forces, although the Serbian deployment had not been completed yet. The Ottomans counter-attacked, but they were stopped by the Morava Division too. The fighting on the border lasted until 19 October when the Ottomans were forced to retreat. On 21 October the entire Third Army began its advance and on the 22nd of October, without serious resistance, entered Pristina. On the 18th of October, Bulgarian 7th Rila Infantry Division of the 2nd Army started its advance towards Gornitshumaya, while the rest of the army advanced towards the village of Strasin and captured it on the 21st of October. The 1st Army crossed the border on the 20th of October and in the evening of the 22nd of October reached the outskirts of Kamanovo. At the other side, as soon as his forces were deployed, Zeki Pasha decided to take the offensive towards Kumanovo. In the evening of the 22nd of October, Varda army gathered in the valley of Psinja River. While Zeki Pasha had the precise information about the strength and disposal of the Serbian forces, the Serbian command did not realize that the battle with the main Ottoman force would start the very next morning. Not expecting the attack, Serbs did not fortify their positions, which were topographically strong. Still, only two out of five infantry divisions were deployed in the front echelon, Danube Division 1 on the left wing, with the cavalry division behind it, and Morava Division 1 on the right wing. The left flank was particularly vulnerable, because Stivica, the important topographic object, 
was defended by local irregulars. During the night of 22 to 23 October, Vi Corps 17th Infantry Division and Monastir Infantry Division crossed Persinja and took the position in the Ottoman center on the hill of Zebrinjak. The main forces of V Corps 13th Infantry Division and Stip Infantry Division remained on the left bank of Psinja, forming the right of the Ottomans which was acting as a reserve and protecting the route from Strasin, while the main forces of 7 Corps 19th Infantry Division and Uskub Infantry Division were on the left side. Chapter 3 Battle Chapter 3 Section 1 The 23rd of October The morning of the 23rd of October was foggy, and reconnaissance could not be performed properly. On the Serbian left flank, the observers noticed the troops of 17th Infantry Division in movement, but mistook them for the Ottoman battery withdrawing from Strasin. Troops of the 18th Regiment of Danube Division 1, which moved forward to capture it, were pushed back, as well as the reconnaissance forces of Cavalry Division. Dot observing the retreat of these Serbian units, Zeki Pasha concluded that the Serbian left wing was weak. Since there were no actions of the Second Army from Strasin, he decided to attack. Around 11 o'clock, with artillery support, five and six corps attacked the positions of Danube Division 1. Soon, 13th and 17th Infantry Division forced the 18th Regiment to retreat in disorder, but, instead of continuing the attack, Zeki Pasha waited for the arrival of Stip Infantry Division from the rear to use this division to attack the Serbian flank and rear. That enabled the Serbian 7th Regiment to aid the wavering 18th Regiment, and to consolidate a defense. Soon after that, the Serbian 8th Regiment arrived, and 7th Regiment was able to move to the left flank and reinforce the defense of Stivica, which was endangered by an attack by the Stip Infantry Division. On the right flank of Danube Division 1, its 9th Regiment halted the advance of the weakened Monastir Infantry Division. Around 12 o'clock, 7 Corps started its attack on the positions held by Morova Division 1. However, Serbian infantry and artillery were already deployed for combat, as the artillery fire from the east suggested that the battle had started. After the initial Ottoman progress, Serbs counterattacked and pushed them back to their starting positions. After the Serbian counterattack, Ottoman units were kept at bay by the well-organized Serbian artillery fire until the end of day. The Serbian rear echelon divisions and the army artillery were not informed about the combat operations. They remained in the rear, without participating in the first day of the battle. The first army command did not receive precise information about the battle, and did not have any influence on the actual combat. Despite these facts, the Ottoman attack of the 23rd of October was not successful, mostly thanks to the high devotion of troops and lower officers. Chapter 3 Section 2 The 24th of October Uninformed about the situation in the field, the 1st Army Command did not realize that the attack of the main Ottoman forces had occurred, as those forces were expected on Ov's pole. Assuming that the Ottoman units north of Kumanovo were merely forward detachments, it ordered the troops to continue their advance towards south, as previously planned. After midnight, it received a report from Danube Division 1 which stated that the division was attacked by the strong enemy forces and suffered heavy casualties, but at that moment it was too late for any change of orders. On the other side, Zeki Pasha decided to continue the attack with the hope that his forces would be able to achieve victory on the following day. The Ottoman attack on their right wing started around 5.30. Vi Corps was assigned to tie up as many enemy forces as possible by attacking from the front, while Stip Infantry Division was again assigned to flank attack. Danube Division 1 again had to withstand heavy pressure, but around 10 o'clock parts of Danube Division 2 arrived from the rear and strengthened the defense. At the same time, Cavalry Division moved to the left bank of Psinja and slowed the advance of Ottoman forces towards Stivica. Around 12 o'clock, parts of Danube Division II reinforced the defense of Stivica, definitely stopping the advance of the Ottoman right wing. On the left Ottoman wing, a lot of reservists from Uskub Infantry Division had deserted during the night, upon hearing that the Third Army had captured Pristina, and that it was marching towards Skopje. Still, at 5.30, Seven Corps started the attack. However, 
Moreover Division 1 counterattacked at 6 o'clock and with the arrival of Timok Division 2 from the rear they forced the entire Ottoman left wing to retreat. Around 9.30, Dina Division 2 from the rear echelon of the 1st Army arrived to the front and attacked the Ottoman center. Around 11 o'clock, Monastir Infantry Division started to retreat. The commander of Vi Corps managed to temporarily halt the Serbian advance by using his last reserves, but in the repeated attack around 1300 hours, Dina Division 1 captured Zebranjak, the main object in Ottoman defense, and forced 17th Infantry Division to retreat. With Uskub Infantry Division and Monastir Infantry Division already retreating, the battle was resolved. At 1500 hours, Morova Division 1 entered Kumanovo. Ottoman forces retreated in disorder, seven and parts of Vikor towards Skopje and V and parts of Vikor towards Stip and Veles. Serbian troops missed the chance to pursue them. Chapter 4 Aftermath The Ottoman Varda army fought the battle according to plan, but despite this, suffered a heavy defeat. Although Zeki Pasha operationally surprised the Serbian command by his sudden attack, the decision to act offensively against the superior enemy was a grave error which determined the outcome of Battle of Kumanovo. On the other side, the Serbian command started the battle without plans and preparations, and missed the chance to pursue the defeated enemy, and effectively end the operations in the region, although it had the fresh troops of the rear echelon available for such action. Even after the end of battle, the Serbs still believed that it was fought against weaker Ottoman units and that main enemy forces were on Ove's pole. Nevertheless, the Battle of Kumanovo was a decisive factor in the outcome of the war in the region. The Ottoman plan for an offensive war had failed, and the Varda army was forced to abandon much territory and lost a significant number of artillery pieces without the possibility to reinforce because the supply routes from Anatolia were cut up the Varda army was not able to organize the defense on Varda river and was forced to abandon Skopje, retreating all the way to Prelep. The first army advanced slowly and entered Skopje on the 26th of October. Two days later, it was strengthened by Morova Division II, while the rest of the third army was sent to western Kosovo and then through northern Albania to the Adriatic coast. The second army was sent to aid the Bulgarians in the siege of Adrianople, while the first army was preparing for an offence towards Prelep and Betela. 